the first 50 miniatures are done. So we have completed the first 50 of our next 100 miniatures painting challenge. And I'm going to go through and show you what we've been able to do. Okay, welcome back everybody. So I hope everybody's week is going well. Um, I've had a chance to get, get a good amount of painting done, although I've been staying up early into the morning doing some of it. You just kind of lose track of time. Uh, but I said I was going to wait till I had done my first 50 to do the first update. And we have completed our first 50. I think it's a little more than 50, but uh, we're going to call it our first 50. So I'm going to start with the outliers, meaning the things I just kind of gave a quick paint job to, just to say I was done. And then I will move on to the ones I'm more proud of. So first up, we have these simple little rats. And they're so small and so... Uh, compact that I didn't even want to put any color in them. I just wanted them to look like little swarm piles. Now, interestingly enough, in Journey to the Overland, the second edition, not the first, I do have rules for rat swarms and just swarms in general. So this would be considered a small swarm. And then there's rules on how you deal with attacks from swarms. So hopefully we will get some use out of them. Uh, the other ones are these... I think these are the Castle Ravenloft Skeletons. So I kind of did these in a traditional skeleton bone color, old rusted shields and swords. That's basically some Typhos corrosion on there. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much. These all have, I think they have a black undercoat. So unlike some people who like to do skeletons with a white undercoat and then a... Uh, Agrax Earthshade or Flesh Wash. I like the black undercoat because as you can see in the skull, uh, the eye sockets, that black will kind of give it some depth. As opposed to if you have white, then the whole thing is going to look like uh, whatever, you know, whatever uh, wash you use. It, it would be brown or, or kind of uh, rusty colored in there. Next, let's just bring up some gremlins. These are, I believe these are some leftovers from Sword and Sorcery. I hope this is the last of my gremlins. Again, I just kind of went with the green gremlin. I actually really like these gremlins. I mean, they, they almost look like uh, goblins, Pathfinder goblins. But they also look like the gremlins from the uh, movie. So, but yeah, they're, they're basic. Let's get some, uh, let's get the little wolf lycanthrope or whatever this is in here. So I didn't do too much with him. Kind of has a weird look about him. It's a weird model. Just didn't want to spend that much time on it. Got my little kobold warriors here in their armor. Their little spears. These guys are cute. See, I would use these as good characters. You know, sort of like the Ewoks in Star Wars that, that come to your rescue. They may come and save your party or help you in the middle of a fight. You know, if you're in a forest or a hill area. You know, and of course, if you're 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 the one that's that's good, you know, assuming you're not there to cause trouble. I'd like to get some more of them. I don't really know where they come from as far as what other sets they're in besides that. I think those are Castle Ravenloft. Some spiders. Again, I mean, how much how much can you do with spiders? They're pretty much spiders. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm going to go through my collection and check on all my spiders. Because uh, <clears throat> sometimes as I was painting these, I'm like, why am I painting up more spiders? I mean, do I really need these? Would I ever use these? You know, if I'm not, why am I painting them? But I do I do like different spiders, and I don't think I have any like this, although I can't say for sure. But, uh, I mean, because obviously there's a lot of variety of spiders in real life. So, uh, but we will see if they get any use. Next up are the, what I call the troglodytes. And 
these again I think are from Castle Ravenloft. Just really primitive looking people, which I really love because you can use these guys. You can find them in a cave. You can encounter them on an island. Uh, they can be somebody's servants or lackeys controlled by someone. So, you always can use some of these. I mean, you would t you probably want a little bit more. I have a module for Journey to the Overland called... Uh, um, the Unknown Island, which is kind of like a very forested area. And these would be the types that you would encounter, but you'd probably encounter more than three because they tend to, tend to run in tribes. Next up are the little woofy dogs. Again, these, these so-called wolves look just totally look more like dogs to me. So I tried to give them more of a menacing appearance. I'm not sure if it worked. Uh, heck, you could use these as dogs in a campaign. You know, Siberian Huskies or Alaskan Huskies or German Shepherds or whatever. Seriously. But, you know, I think they look cute. I mean, they don't really look all that menacing. I mean, maybe you have a scenario where... You know, you, you come across them and, you know, they help your party. They they lead you to food and water and they let you live with them for a while. You know, and then maybe there's a larger pack that is preying on them and slowly picking them off. And you decide to try to lead them against the pack to deal with it once and for all before they're all picked off. So who knows? Or else they could just be... Wolves, like if you play the Wartlings game, I think they're called Wartlings. They're like the little kids' miniatures. These would be some cool little wolves to put in a campaign like that. I mean, scary enough for, you know, the right age group. Not quite scary enough for uh, the rest of us. So let's, let's usher them out and bring in the next set. Again, these are some of my, what I call outliers. This is the guy that I wanted to paint like Yoda. So I like that. I actually have a little Yoda figure like that came with one of those Star Wars Trivial Pursuits that is painted up. I think I showed him somewhere. At least I showed the miniature. I don't know if I showed him after I painted him. So I'm thinking of maybe using them together. You know, I would see him as maybe some type of wide sage that sends Yoda off on a quest or sends Yoda on a mission. And Yoda has to report back to him about the happenings in their world, you know, and whether there's danger approaching their people. So I like that. My camera's having a hard time focusing with these separate objects. So let's just bring everybody up together. So we'll put Yoda down for a second. This is the quote-unquote mayor and the town crier. See if we can get that into focus. So I like the way the mayor came out, although I probably wouldn't use him as a mayor. I mean, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what town would let their mayor walk around that, that blinked up. <laughs> Usually things in towns are a little bit, you know, more, more uh, desperate than that. You can't be walking around like that. But, you know, there's universities and guilds and shipmasters that you could use him for. The town crier, I kind of wanted to put some color in him, so kind of the green pants, yellow socks. I mean, he's the type of guy, he wants to get everybody's attention when he shows up. So he's very bright and colorful with his red crier's hat. Uh, let's see, I got a couple more outliers. Well, these are easy. These are my gargoyles. Which what I like about these gargoyles is you can use them the way I painted them anyway. I can use them simply as gargoyle statutes. So they could be in a building or in a field. Right? Say you have an encounter and you, you, you're told we're gonna meet with at the three gargoyles and this is you know, this is maybe a uh an orchard or something where, you know, it's, it's symbolized by these three gargoyles that face each other. That's what I like about them. But, I mean, if you want, you could also 
animate them and, and use them, you know, as an attack. If you, you get in a gargoyle encounter, it, it lands in front of you like that, and it's stone beast. So that's all I went with is basically some stone color and then a dry brush of white. Just definitely like that. But like I said, I, I see these more as statues, gargoyle groves or gargoyle uh, monuments, you know, that would mark some type of meeting place or location or something. Let me get these out of camera so they don't mess up my view. My camera doesn't like trying to focus in on more than one thing at a time. This is another worm, which I feel you can never have too many wormy looking creatures. Now, I will be showing the other one that is like being ridden by the uh, skeleton leader. It is a much larger one. This one I did want to do in more of a fleshy color something you would literally like grab like this and pull out of the ground and that's just the feel I wanted to evoke that you would just pull this big old thing up you know and hold it by its edge and this is what you would say is oh my goodness that thing is gross and yes it is so this is basically a a flesh color and then I diluted some red paint to make a wash and I just put the red over it. I like stuff like this because it can be a natural encounter that is not necessarily, you know, supernatural or horrific. Just something naturally scary and creepy. Uh, I don't really know if it would be much of a danger. I mean, it's got a lot of soft spots on it. So I don't really see this as much of a threat. More of maybe a meal. <laughs> If you're into eating that. Uh, but if you're by yourself, it could it could pose a slight threat. But that is an interesting one. The next ones we will do, we're kind of working our way up to the better items, is the uh, camp campsite. So this was a fun one to paint, like I said. So I got the log. I was going to do it rotted, but then I decided I didn't want to do it because I was worried it would look bad. So I kind of went with this this kind of oak or walnut color, which I like. It's different color for wood. This is the pot, which I wanted to be rusted. So I might have rusted it too much with the uh, typhus corrosion. This is the fire. And that's not attached. That, that can come off, I think. Uh roasting a rabbit which has been skinned obviously so I really like that I base these these don't come like this but I based them just makes it easier not to lose and keep track of but yeah this fire does not it's not attached you can move that off put a bigger fire put a bigger flame under there to cook it a little bit faster so you can choose like the way that came now the other thing we had in that well I don't know if it was in that set but the other thing we had in that line is this hanging cage so if you can see this got a total rush job I first did it in metal so you can see them the metal up here and then I covered all that in rust it's a little tall so I'm gonna see if I can get you a better look I did the wood in a dark, I think it was called walnut wash. So you can see there. I didn't dry brush it. I could have, but I decided I didn't. I just wanted it to have that dark color like that with no dry brushing. You can see the string. And I did a tutorial on how to string that up, the stones. Now, of course, I'm sure you guys are wondering, what about the, the victim? Well, he's in there. If we drop this bottom, <laughs> he falls out. Ah, he gets to stretch his legs two minutes every day. So nothing usual, nothing special about him, but who knows who he is. He may be some renowned sage, some great alchemist, some crazed inventor. You know, he may be some mad townsman. Who knows? Who knows why he's in here? That's a, that's a story hook right there. You ride into town, 
you see this old emaciated looking guy hanging in a cage and nobody in the town will tell you who he is or why he's hanging there or let alone how long he's been hanging there all right so let's get into with some of the things i did a little bit special with the first things i will show you are these guys now remember these were supposed to be flaming skeletons and i said i didn't like that so I made them look like skeletons that were literally emerging from the ice and in the process forming these massive frozen fireballs to throw at you. So I wanted it to look like perhaps you are in an ice cavern and all of a sudden the skeletons just start breaking away from the wall of the ice. Maybe these are people like Captain America that died and were encased in the ice. And now they are literally pulling themselves out the wall and bringing forth a magical frozen fireball that even though it's, it's frozen, it, it has an intense heat and an attack. So I really like that ideal. That's what I tried to make come through in the paint job is that these were bones literally stepping out of an ice block uh, to come at you and your party. Or whatever. Now, I don't know if I have an encounter like that, although I might write one up. <laughs> I might write one up. That's the thing when you have your own solo role-playing game. If you think something's cool, you simply write one up. And the way my game works, because a lot of the encounters are card-driven, all I have to do is go on my computer and format a card, stat it out, you know, give them their attacks and their reactions, and hey... And that some fun can be had for one and all. Now the next thing is this guy here. Now this is actually supposed to be a flesh golem. He looks more like a Frankenstein's monster to me. But he is he's much larger than a Frankenstein. I mean if you compare him to a man sized figure. I mean he's definitely larger than any kind of Frankenstein's creature. I mean this guy would have had to have been parted together out of you know giants you know can you imagine the, the guy that built him trying to carry that arm to the lab to to start working on i mean you need a cart so like i said he is called a flesh golem i believe but i prefer to see him as a frankenstein's monster you know like a second iteration you know maybe made out of parts and things but Definitely a formidable uh, opponent, adversary. But I don't know if he's necessarily evil. I mean, I always saw Frankenstein as misunderstood. right? I always saw him as hated when he had nothing to do with his creation. He had nothing to do with the way that he was, he was brought into existence. His unlife, as you would call it. Although I don't remember in the movie whether he actually killed somebody. I know he like killed some people that are trying to kill him, but I don't know if he kills anybody before then. Like I don't know if after the minute he's born, the first thing he does is, you know, kill. Which would kind of be an indication that he's something evil. But if not, then I mean you could you could create a story for this guy. Maybe he, you know, is trying to get away and hide. Maybe he Rumor of his creation has gotten out and a, a hunter like a Van Helsing is looking for him, right? And he, he only wants to be left alone. Then again, maybe he hates people and he hates being created and he stalks the night to crush men's heads in his hands and to defile women with his teeth. So, yeah, then he would kind of be evil. <laughs> Next up. So this is what I decided to do with this rotten Draculich or rotten worm or whatever it is. So this is your Citadel blood color, which I like for that. Uh, did a few different things with him. I didn't want to go for the standard just rotted bone, dry brush rotted bone. I wanted to, I wanted to kind of look like he was... Things were happening to him in phases, right? You could obviously see he was rotting. You could obviously see the blood.
but this is actually bone. So now all the skin is left out a long time ago. The wings are bone and flesh. You know, there's some flesh inside. There's something growing there. The outer part of his tail is obviously what he looked like before whatever happened to him happened. You know, maybe a powerful wizard or caster put a curse on him, right? And it's just withering him away to eating death or something. So, yeah, I wanted to kind of convey that. I think I did a good job. I think it, I think it tells a story. If you paint a miniature right, it will tell a story. All right, so I'm going to show you guys the last, the kind of the bulk of the ones that got me up to 50. Okay, and these are my skeletons. These ones I really like. I'm, I think I did a decent job on them. So these are from the Room Wars. And I mean, these are fast becoming my favorite skeletons of all time. Even better than a lot of the OGW stuff. Now, I will say they were not as easy as you would think because being skeletons, because they had a lot of clothes and armor and bits and things. But man, I just felt like they really rewarded you if you put time in them. And they were not super difficult to do. I mean, you could always do more highlighting, more shading, more colors, more corrections. But man, you know, once you got to a point where you said, okay, it's time for the wash. You really got a lot out of what you had done. So these are the archers. And I liked, I even put a little color in them. I don't think I used as much color as room boards did. At least not in these. But I did give them a little color. Kind of more to signify that their, their weapons and things are maybe magical or whatever. Rather than normal weapons and things. Since of course they're not normally alive. So these are the skeleton archers. There was what four, eight of those. And then I had the skeletons with axes. Which I felt like I got similar results from. So we put the archers in the back. These I did do, I think I did the purple cloaks that the game had. I think the game had purple cloaks. And again, these are some miniatures that really reward you for a little bit of effort. Just a little bit. You go just one step further. So to give you an example of what I mean, I did not just give these a, a wash with like Agrex, Earthshade, or Flesh Wash. I did that, and then after it dried, I went over everything with the black wash. And that's the key to this. Right, you got to let the Agrax Earthshade and stuff dry on the bones. But then you go back over it with the black wash on your weapons and your shields. And then that's how you get that depth in the shields and things like that. So those are the axe guys. There is, I think, seven of them. And last but not least are our swords. Well, there's another axe guy. I think there's eight of each. Eight axes, eight swords, eight bows. And the swords, I did the same paint scheme as the axes. They just kind of have their sh shields out in front of them. The ragged clothing, the green and the purple. I thought those were good complementary colors. Not sure if they are or not, but I liked them like that. So I really, like I said, I really like these. These have actually risen to be my favorite skeletons, period. Now, some of the stuff I don't like, like their leader who rides on this big carrion worm that I'm going to be getting, I kind of don't like that. Although I guess if you needed a mount for a skeleton, a big worm would actually be appropriate, assuming they both came out of the earth. So, yeah, that, that does make sense, although... You know, why a skeleton would be mounted, I don't know. But if he's a skeleton general, then maybe. But, yeah, I actually, I actually think those guys came out real well. So that's like three sets of eight, which is, what, 24? So you have 27 there. You know, if we, we bring those three in, and then uh, we'll put the... 
Worm here is 28. Three gargoyles is 31. Three ice skeletons is 34. One Frankenstein is 35. One Draculich is 36. The camp equipment we will just call 40. Town Crier and Mayor, 42. Three Troglodytes, 45. Three Kobolds, 48. Hanging Cage, 49. And we're not done. We're not done. Three traditional skeletons. 52. Three gremlins. 55. Three rat swarms. 58. I can't you guys can see all this stuff. Probably can't. 58. One Yoda. 59. Two spiders. 61. One lycanthrope. 62. Oh, and another spider. 63. So, yeah, I told you it was a little bit over 50. So that's 63 miniatures. And now the painting continues on my my, my uh, dash to 100. So I will probably do the next update when I get in like another 20, 25 miniatures done. So those will probably be the free folk. Take care, everybody. God bless.